Greetings fellow pilgrims, my name is Doug, this is Camino 2020, and today we are going to be talking about the most important piece of gear that you are going to be bringing with you on the Camino de Santiago, and that is footwear. The Camino de Santiago is basically one big walk, and because you walk with your feet, how you treat your feet is going to be extremely important to the success of your Camino. One of the biggest considerations when it comes to taking care of your feet is what you're going to wear as you're on your walk. There are two primary debates that seem to be going around about the best footwear you can bring on the Camino. Now, the first of the big debates about footwear has to do with boots versus shoes. Now, it might seem that something like the Camino would just beg for hiking boots. It's a big, long walk, and there is quite a bit of hiking along the way. And so something called hiking boot seems like it would probably be a pretty good choice. Now, the most obvious difference between boots and shoes is how tall they are. Boots are typically going to go up at least above the ankle, if not higher, and what this does in a, in a hiking boot is it gives your ankle extra support. As this wraps around your leg, if you're walking on an uneven surface and you go sideways, the boot's material can actually help your ankle from rolling over and possibly getting sprained or strained. Are those two different things? Or broken. The other thing about most hiking boots is that they are made of very robust materials, combining to basically protect your foot and give it some good purchase for climbing through rocks, dirt, other elements that could potentially cause injury. The downside of the boot is that because it is wrapping around your ankle, it is basically sealing off your entire foot area for heat retention. And so all the heat that your foot generates is going to probably stay inside this boot. It can't get out the top as easy because this thing is sealed onto your leg or around your ankle, and it's not going to escape through the material very well because you've got, again, very dense materials that the boot is made of. Because the materials are heavier and because there's more of it around that ankle, the boot is going to weigh more than a shoe and it's going to be a lot hotter. And when it comes to walking, heat is not just an issue of comfort, it's an issue of potential injury. Because when your feet get hot, they sweat. And when there is moisture on the skin, it becomes rougher, it becomes more tacky, it becomes easier to abrade, and you start getting blisters. So, one of the trade-offs that you've got to think of right away is that if you're going to be walking the Camino, what's more likely? That you're going to encounter an uneven surface and possibly roll your ankle over and strain or break it? Or that you're going to be walking for a long time and your feet are going to get hot and you're going to get blisters? Practically everybody has blister issues. So the heat retention part of the equation is very important to consider. Now, let's talk about weight for a moment. If you've done more than 60 or 70 seconds worth of research on shoe choices for the Camino, you have probably run across the rule of thumb that says that for every pound you put extra on your feet, it's like adding five pounds to your back. In other words, the idea is that slightly heavier shoes make a big difference in your overall kit. Now, I'm, I'm not professor science or anything, but if I'm standing here comfortably like this, my shoes could weigh 500 pounds and it wouldn't feel any different because all the weight is under me. I'm standing, it's the planet that's holding the 500 pound shoes, not my body. I don't notice how heavy my shoes are until I pick a leg up. Now, obviously, if I've got 500 pound shoes on, lifting them is going to be extraordinarily difficult. But it's not going to be difficult while I'm standing. And because when you walk, you don't lift both legs at the same time, only one leg at a time is feeling that weight. Contrast that with the backpack. If I've got a 500 pound backpack on, it's going to be crushing me right now where I'm standing because the planet's not holding it. I am. And so that 500 pound backpack is going to be weighing me down even if I'm not walking at all. But if I were able to lean over and balance perfectly on one leg with a 500 pound backpack, the leg that's up in the air is not bearing any of its weight. And so that backpack weight doesn't matter to the leg that's lifting up. Only the shoe weight does. 
and only one shoe weight at a time matters to the lifting leg because it's not lifting both shoes at the same time. So, given that you've got two completely different kinds of motion and two completely different muscle groups carrying the weight, adding a little extra weight onto your feet is not going to feel like you put five times that much weight in your backpack. That's simply not true. What is true is that the amount of energy it takes to carry that weight is about five times more when it's on your feet than when it's on your back. Now this makes sense. If you were about to go for a hike and I said, oh, ho, oh, oh, hey, wait a minute, you forgot your watermelon. <laughs> um, where would you rather put the watermelon? Would you rather put it in a backpack that is resting on your waist and being supported by the big muscles of your legs? Or would you rather put that 10 pound watermelon on your foot and have to walk with it? Obviously, you'd rather put it in the backpack. And that's where this ratio comes from. Now, how much difference does it really make? Well, let's have a look here. Uh, these are my hiking boots. These are the Keen Tarhi 2 waterproof boots. They weigh 24 ounces each. This is a Teva XLT hiking sandal. It's not their lightest one. This is actually made for hiking in and, and not just, you know, kicking back at the lake. This sandal weighs 16 ounces. So if I am choosing the biggest, heaviest footwear that I have versus a sandal, we're only talking a difference of eight ounces. That's like a very, very small uh, cup of water. I simply want to point out that it may not be as big of a difference as you really think. Now let's move on to the shoe. Obviously, first thing to note about the shoe, it is a lot lower cut. This shoe is not going to help you if you roll off of an uneven surface. In addition, shoes are usually made with much thinner material. And what that means is that they are not going to help you out as much if you are kicking through brush or stubbing your toe up against a rock. Um, you're probably going to feel that. Why would you wear a shoe? Well, the advantages are it's a lot lighter. Okay, so for example, now this is, this is a, a special shoe made for trail running. Um, this is the Ultra Lone Peak, which I will talk about more later. These shoes weigh 12 ounces. These shoes weigh less than these sandals. So when it comes to going lightweight, if that is an important consideration for you, shoe's a good idea. The other big deal, and I think this is probably the biggest, is that because of the lighter weight material that the shoes have, and because they're not going up your leg and sealing around your calf in order to protect your ankle, the shoes are gonna be a lot cooler when you're walking. And what that means is less blisters. I don't know about you, I generally don't wear boots. I wear shoes all the time, and I hardly ever break my ankle. In fact, I never have. If I'm out backpacking and I'm in rugged area and I've got an extra 30 pounds pressing down into my legs, that's when an ankle roll becomes a lot more probable and a lot more dangerous. Because when you roll an ankle and you're backpacking with a lot of extra weight, those muscles are not used to carrying that much weight You've got that much more weight pressing down on your ankle that's rolling over, and you're probably in an area where you're gonna be rolling your ankle all the time. That's what I use my boots for. But when it comes to day hiking, I just put the shoes on. As I've said in other places though, the Camino is kind of in between. Sometimes it's a lot like mountain backpacking, and sometimes it's a lot like a day hike. So I don't really know that there's a perfect solution here, and that is probably why the debate rages on. One final note about shoes versus boots. Because the material in a boot is typically much stronger and stiffer, it's gonna hold its shape a lot better. But what that means is that you're going to have to go through a fairly significant break-in period when you buy hiking boots. And what that means is that you're going to have to put those on and put some good miles on those boots before you really know how they're going to fit. They're going to rub wrong. They're going to need you to be in them uh, walking and pressing the material into the shape that it needs to be in. And you don't want to do that by walking in them 10 hours straight. It's going to tear your feet up. It's a total noob mistake, don't make it. If you go with hiking boots, you need to put some miles on those things before you go on the Camino. And the nice thing about shoes is because of the materials that they use, there's basically no break-in period. You can pull the shoes off the shelf, put them on your feet. If they feel good, you're out the door and you're ready to go. 
like. This is your Camino. Whatever shoes you pick, you're going to be the one wearing them. It's all you. Own it. Hike your own hike. Don't worry about what other people are doing. I've given you some general considerations here. I hope they have been helpful. If you like this video, please give it a like by clicking that thumbs up down there. Subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you can get notifications of future videos. And Buen Camino.